is in there. We're going to get started in about a minute. to four o'clock. <laughs> Have some people coming in in the back. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, is everybody ready? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for being here. My name is Beverly Thompson. I am the Director of Public Affairs for the City of Durham. I want to thank you again for joining us to talk about both the city and the county status following a cyber malware attack. I need to emphasize first that we believe that these attacks were two separate attacks for two separate organizations, okay? Both the city and the county. City Manager Tom Bonfield will come to you first, along with the city's chief information officer, who is Carrie Good, and they're going to talk to you about how the city is responding and how this occurred. Afterward, county officials will speak to the county status. And then following that, we will open it up for questions. Okay, Tom. Thank you, Beverly. Good afternoon, everyone. On Friday evening, the city of Durham data networks experienced a serious cyber malware attack, which affected our entire network. Thanks to our advanced notification systems, our technology solutions department acted quickly to take networks and phones offline, which greatly minimized the damage to the city's operating systems. The malware has been contained, and we are in recovery mode with city staff and other cybersecurity professionals working around the clock to get everything back up and running. There is no mistaking this was a serious incident and the city's advanced threat detection and cybersecurity software allowed us to respond quickly. A forensic investigation is underway, but due to the nature of the event and the kind of malware that was used, the cybersecurity professionals has, have confirmed and we are highly confident that no personally identifiable information was compromised as a result of this breach, including city employee and resident data. At this time, most city networks and phones remain intentionally offline during the initial stages of the recovery process. With assistance from the fire and police departments, Durham Emergency Communications Center continues to receive 911 calls and has been dispatching police, fire, and EMS responses as needed since the incident occurred. While phones are down, city residents can still access services and make payments via our DurhamNC.gov website, which was not affected by the attack. This includes putting in a request to Durham One Call via our website or phone app and paying water bills through the Paymentus application. Again, these systems were not affected. I am very grateful to our technology solutions department who made sure that we were prepared, responded quickly, and continue to work tirelessly as we work through the recovery process. I also wanna give my thanks to these agencies who are helping with the recovery effort, including the National Guard Cybersecurity Team, Duke University, IT Specialists, and Carolina IT. At this time, I'd like to introduce Carrie Good, the city's CIO, who will provide additional details on the timeline and recovery process. So I'm Kerry Good, CIO and the Director of Technology Solutions. So let me begin with by saying uh, we have a cybersecurity program and we have planned for this day to occur. We have a contingency plan that we had built. And so immediately upon notification from the monitoring system, we activated our response plan. And that called bringing together 
a team of professionals, including MS ISAC, including uh, Carolina Cyber Response Team, and including the state DIT, we came to bear on this problem. So it, what we did initially is what Tom Bonds of the city manager said was to con contain it, we turn off our core switch so that the spread will, will be contained. And at that point, we started doing forensics to understand what we were dealing with. And based on uh, MS ISAC and Huntress, our monitoring team, we clearly identified the virus as RYUK virus, and it uh, is one of the premier malware, ransomware uh, type of virus. So, so immediately on, on, we met Saturday morning, we had a meeting with our response team, and then we had a meeting with MS ISAC, we gathered more information, and then we created a, a plan of action to move forward with the containment and er er eradication. We created a, a plan, we call it our black, gray, and white plan, was that the network presently is black, but we need to turn our network into white. So we did is take every device within the network, and we went through a process of clearing that device using tools and analysis. And once the device is, is we think is clear, we move it to the gray, gray we will test it on a separate network to ensure that it doesn't have ransomware, and then we will plug it back into our citywide network, which is going to be the white network. So we have a three-tier program. And also at the same time, we asked the question, is there any better tools out there to defend the city? And we quickly identified a tool that can catch th this type of ransomware and eradicate it. And we're putting that on the workstation as added precaution. So every workstation goes on the network will have this agent that will identify any further contamination and it will shut the workstation down, report it to us as well. So we have put together some technology teams led by Technology Solutions. The, the resources came from Duke IT, National Guard, Carolina IT, we have approximately 20 additional PC specialists that are helping us go around and to uh, clean approximately 1,000 workstations that was contaminated. We had 80 workstations, 80 servers in our data center contaminated. So, and we're in the process currently uh, restoring our core business servers, Mun we use Munis, and when I last left, we were 86% restored. Of course, that's our biggest server. It's probably approximately 20 to 30 terabytes in size, so it's taking a little bit of time to download it from our cloud backup system. We expect it to be back online soon. In the next two or three hours, it will be back online. And this is our system that does our core business, HR payroll, utilities. And then we bring it up our work order system, our one call system. Uh, which is not as big, and they should be coming online tomorrow. We, we think our data center will be fully recovered in two days, and then the remainder of the work will be along the lines of restoring each workstation and, and, and giving that connectivity back to the employee. Um, that's our game plan, and of course, with every plan, we run into contingencies, and if we do, it may slow us down, but the city can be assured that our, our backups are very good because they're immutable, which means that ransomware cannot consume our backups. We're using a, a product called Rubik. It's one of the leading backup systems you can purchase. And um, one of the reasons we purchased it was because it was a backup system that could not be uh, consumed by ransomware. And, and at this time, um, that's the update that I have for you as far as how we're going to move forward with this uh, clearing and bringing the city back into production on our computer systems.
Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon. I'm Deborah Craig Ray, Durham County General Manager for Strategic Planning and Innovation. Now it's time to hear from our County Manager, Wendell Davis, who will talk about the county's perspective and impact during this attack. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Deborah, and good afternoon. So Durham County was notified on late Friday evening about the malware attack on our county resources. Soon thereafter, our IS&T team called in additional cybersecurity resources to investigate, perform forensics, and determine the extent of the impact. I am comfortable that we have and will acquire the resources to address this breach. Our goal is to continue to provide citizens services as appropriately as possible during the time that our systems are down. That can mean some manual processes and other workarounds that will be brought to bear during this period. But it is important that we take our time to fully investigate and restore our business systems to ensure we provide enhanced security so that this situation does not reoccur. The recovery period is critical and we must do it right. At the end of the day, we ask our citizens and our employees for their patience as we work through this business interruption. At this time, I'd like to recognize our is and Director, Greg Marrow, who will report to you on our current situation and how we move forward from this point. I also want to take the occasion to walk, thank Cisco Systems, our National Guard Cybersecurity Unit, as well as Microsoft for their assistance in this uh, effort. In addition to Greg coming forth, we also have some additional department heads present in the room to ask any subsequent questions that may come up around public health, emergency services, and emergency management, uh, and more. So Greg? Thank you, uh, County Manager. Uh, my name again is uh, Greg Marrow, CIO with the uh, County of Durham. And as the county manager mentioned, uh, similar to the city, uh, we uh, experienced a ransomware attack on Friday evening as well. And uh, we uh, executed our incident plan on Friday evening. As county manager mentioned, uh, we are taking a, a slow process in terms of uh, investigating the, uh, the cause of the attack and looking deeply into our systems to, to ensure that when we do our backups, we don't affect, uh, we don't have this problem a week from now. And so we're following a very similar process to the city, not going to repeat that process, but we're going through an investigative stage. Uh, I think it's fair to say we are wrapping up our investigation stage. We do know it's a ransomware attack. We now know where it emanated you know, from and, and how it, how it uh, entered the, uh, the county uh, network. Uh, in terms of restoration, uh, we're beginning that process now. So we're moving out of the investigation stage into the restoration process. And our focus at the county is beginning to look at uh, social services, public health, to ensure that citizens can quickly and expeditiously begin to, uh, to uh, utilize services that are provided through uh, whether it's online, whether it's through computers, whether it's through our call center. And so that's our focus over at the uh, the county. As uh, Carrie mentioned, our numbers look about the same. Uh, we have about a thousand computers or so that we need to re-image. On the county side, we've decided that we're going to take the precaution and re-image all desktops and all laptops. And uh, in terms of our data center, we have about a hundred servers that, that we have decided to uh, rebuild from scratch. Uh, just for uh, precautionary precautionary measures. And lastly, I'll just mention, as the count, county manager said, uh, we have a full team of uh, folks working with us from the National Guard to uh, the state of North Carolina to other 
agencies within uh, uh, North Carolina who have gone through this process, who are now here uh, working with us. And we also have several of our business partners, uh, Microsoft, Cisco, and, and a few other partners who are actively working with us to help us uh, get back to normal. And so uh, I think that's pretty much it from the, from the county side. So thank you. Um, we're going to open it up for questions, and after our questions, we're going to have a statement from Mayor Shul and Commissioner Jacobs. So we do have a mic, and okay, all right. Do you have any idea how this even got onto the uh, workstations? Did somebody open up an email or download something? I'm going to ask our experts to come up and talk to you about that. I don't know if you heard the question. Can you repeat the question? Do you know how this ransomware even got onto the server or network? Uh, I'll go first from, I'm Kerry Gary, the CIO for the city of, of Durham. Based on our forensic analysis up to this point, uh, we had several analysts look at our patient zero information. We have identified five workstations that could possibly be uh, patient zero. And based on the analysis, it looks like an email was the uh, way that it's in, infiltrated into our network. Someone clicking on a uh, attachment within an email. Uh, Greg Merrow again from the county side. Similar to uh, the city, um, we've identified uh, two, uh, two laptops and we believe that uh, uh, the virus entered our, uh, the malware entered the county through uh, someone clicking on a, an email as well. And this question is for Mr. Merrow. With respect to the county, has any data information on, say, voter registration records been compromised? Have they been stolen, lost? I've heard a number of comments from the public about voter registration information. What can you say to that end? So based upon our investigation to date, uh, we have no indication that any data uh, has been stolen or, or tampered with. And it's also important for me to say that uh, all of our data sitting at rest or in transit is encrypted. But uh, as, as, as part of the uh, forensic investigation, we have no indication that any data has been tampered with. And in your forensic investigation, have you had any indication of why Durham City and County were targeted in this? Uh, no, we, we haven't seen, we don't, know, we don't know of any specific reason other than uh, the hackers, the cyber threat actors don't, don't need a reason to attack you other than they, they want uh, to, to do it. And, uh, and also, we haven't received any ransom notes yet. We've been looking for it, but we haven't see, received any screens or any kind of ransom request. That leads me to my question. What was the nature of the email attachment? Do you know? We can get that information for you, but we don't have that uh, information right now. The, the analysts didn't, didn't share that with us because we didn't ask. Uh, okay. I, I am curious. And um, which specific office inside city and county government did this email uh, I guess, infiltrate. Yeah, on the, uh, on the county side, uh, all we have identified is a particular lap laptop. We haven't gone to, you know, okay, what, what office is this connected with or what person is this connected with? Right now, all we're concerned with is understanding the nature of the situation. Is communi- oh, well, to the uh, city. And, and I echo what uh, Greg Myers said. Our focus was, uh, understanding the how and not, not the who at this time. Will there be any type of education among your employees since it seems to be a user error that this started? Yeah, at the city of, of Durham, we've been doing cybersecurity awareness and we even test them to see if they uh, are cognizant of what we did when we trained them. And we had a very high score of employees complying with not clicking on phishing email attempts 
Uh, of course, we're not, not all employees passed, but it was a high degree of employees that passed the test. Can, <clears throat> can employees continue to work at their offices over the next couple of days, or you know, do they have to work from home? What, what does this mean for the employees who can't access records and so forth? Certainly, um, the work is adjusted. All of our employees uh, receive notice that uh, they are to report to work and they are, they are at their work. Uh, their work may be different. In some cases, uh, it is uh, as uh, rudimentary as uh, paper and, uh, and pencil. Uh, in other cases, uh, there are some, some systems that, you know, that are allowed to, uh, to accumulate data. Uh, but the most important thing is we want to be uh, you know, available as soon as the phone systems are up and certainly City Hall, the doors uh, were open and we have facilities all over the city and all operations uh, were, were available to, uh, to meet the public today. Is there any suggestion that this uh, hack might have had anything to do with the elections, that is an election year? No, I, I mean, the, the, the technical folks can, uh, can answer that question. Uh, while, while it may be perceived that Durham was targeted or Durham City and County were targeted, uh, from what I understand and, and Carrie can confirm, I mean, th these attempts are going on all over the country, all over the world. Uh, this particular virus uh, is prolific, uh, has, uh, has um, retained a significant amount of ransom being paid by a lot of people. And, uh, and I think this was really just, uh, you know, something that uh, uh, was, it wasn't identi identified just as the city or the county of Durham. Uh, we just happened to, uh, have had the misfortune of, uh, of you know, th th this happening uh, simultaneously. Carrie, you wanna talk about what Rod uh, um, Tom Bumpy is correct. Uh, our forensic information haven't seen any specific reason why we were targeted. But we do know that this particular ransomware have earned $3 billion up to this point based on the analysis. So it, it's a high earning uh, type attack by the cyber threat actors. And I, and I think they just wanted to see if they can penetrate and get us. Until they get our backups consumed, we can always recover. And, uh, and like, not like other cities, our backups were not consumed by the, by the uh, malware. So it's just time element for us to recover. Thank you. So there was a question about whether or not our employees are working. Um, obviously, all of our employees are at work today. Uh, we do business continuity planning, and so we essentially just activated, our, activated those plans for the most part, and it means a number of different things for our various departments. Uh, some folks bought uh, their uh, printers to work uh, and work offline along with their computers and uh, things of that nature. And so uh, all of our employees are working. And if you know, we get uh, ultimately to a point that uh, we have to exercise uh, our telecommuting practices and things of that nature, we will, but we are not at that point. Uh, I think that we are uh, in a good recovery uh, place. Um, can you tell us why the public wasn't notified about this until two days after the attack happened? Yeah, I'm not sure that is exactly correct. Um, we've issued, we issue statements when we have information to share. Uh, while we get, get a lot of questions, uh, the, the staff, our staff, the city staff was working around the clock to try to understand uh, what was going on and what was, you know, what was the, the extent of the problem. And uh, we wanted to wait until we had our hands around, handle around that uh, before we issued the official public statement. I think that was, was that yesterday? Uh, but this was not something that uh, uh, we were, you know, there was anything to be kept secret about. We were just very concerned about uh, misinformation coming from, uh, from guessing what happened until we were sure what happened. Bill? I don't, I don't have anything I can add to that. Uh, my question, will this incur any additional costs? Well, I think it depends on how you, uh, how you describe additional costs. Obviously, uh, we've got uh, additional staff time, additional resources. Uh, the city does have cybersecurity insurance. Uh, we have had cybersecurity insurance for quite some time. Uh, our cybersecurity insurer has been put on notice, and uh, at some point we will make an assessment about uh, 
what additional costs that we incurred that would be eligible to, uh, to come under that coverage. Again, I would just echo what Tom said on the front end of his statement. We do have that same insurance as well on the county side. Uh, as we go through these experiences, obviously we will learn some things about uh, our system. And as we learn those things, we may have to make additional investments, but we're not at that point yet to understand uh, precisely uh, what that means in the broader context of this investigation. Uh, but if we uh, discover that additional investments need to be made, then we will have that conversation internally and we'll have some conversations with our uh, elected leaders. When was the last time employees were trained on cybersecurity awareness? At, at the city of Durham, uh, it was uh, last fall, uh, around November, December timeframe. And at the county, uh, we do cybersecurity training on an ongoing basis. So as part of uh, new employee orientation, uh, cybersecurity training is included in that. Uh, we're always doing something on a monthly basis in terms of training and warning and preparing employees for uh, these kinds of uh, incidents. And, and let me add, um, our training is continuous. Uh, new, new employees are trained on cybersecurity through our orientation. Also on our screen savers, we have training that they see every time that screen uh, goes into screensaver mode. We, we warn them about phishing emails and, and about spear, spear phishing and, and how uh, cyber security is very important to how they use their computers. And uh, anyone working in the city sees that screensaver every day. <laughs> and just, just to kind of sum things up, again, you've addressed this here and there, but to summarize, when do you anticipate everything will be, quote, back to normal, when things will be functioning normally at the city and county level? At the city, I have a great, great deal of confidence that within two weeks, we'll be back fully operational. And on the, on the uh, county side, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, we're still in, we, we are a little bit more uh, cautious and so we're, we're starting the restoration process today. Um, I, I would say on the, on the um, you know, if everything goes great, it, it could be within a week. And then if there's some uh, extenuating circumstances that, that, you know, come up, it may be uh, two weeks. Now we're gonna hear from Commissioner Chair Jacobs and Mayor Shule. I just wanna say while they're coming up that Trout said we're gonna keep you up to date on our social media forums and uh, just get information out whenever we can and need to to the public to keep you apprised of what's going on. Good afternoon, I'm Wendy Jacobs, Chair of the Durham County Board of Commissioners. And I just want to share with our residents that um, we are in very good hands. We have outstanding IT staff, our, our IT director, Greg Marrow, and all of our IT staff are fantastic. People have been working as hard as they can around the clock. Um, this, unfortunately, is something that they have prepared for and train for. Um, as you heard from, from comments, um, uh, our, all of our employees, and even me personally as a county commissioner, uh, have been trained to uh, watch out for fishing expeditions, but we know that in today's world, unfortunately, um, these types of uh, attacks are very, very skillfully crafted. Um, all of us know from the emails that we get personally, from the phone calls even that we get, um, that these attacks can look like a bank statement or an order, a uh, purchase order. Um, it, is, it is very, very difficult and it is very easy uh, for somebody to just click on an email or an attachment um, and this is what happens. I think the good news is that we have prepared for this 
Uh, we have, the county has invested very heavily uh, in um, preparing for this moment. And uh, I have full confidence in our staff. Uh, and we just ask people to be patient. We ask our residents uh, to just be patient um, and that everybody is doing, doing their best to make sure that all of our residents are um, having the services and programs that they need. And that, that is our number one priority. So everyone is working as hard as they can. Uh, social services, public health, EMS, our 911 center, the office of the sheriff, uh, making sure that we are taking care of residents in our community. So again, I just wanna thank uh, our county manager, um, all of our department heads who are here, um, all of the county staff, um, you know, everyone's learning to talk to each other face to face and talking on the phone, things that we uh, maybe don't do as often as we should. And we will, we will all get through this together. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Commissioner Jacobs. And uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, I want to echo what Wendy has just said. Uh, we in the city are very fortunate that we have super capable people in our technology solutions department uh, who are doing a great job and uh, we're prepared for this. Um, let me just say a little bit about our cybersecurity. One of the things that I don't believe Carrie did say is we back up all of our data in the city every two hours. So when something like this happens, we lose mo no more than two hours worth of data. So that is one of our cybersecurity protections. Another one of them is something that uh, our, uh, both Greg and Carrie have also mentioned, as did Commissioner Jacobs, which is we, all, we, we are all the time uh, educated about these phishing attempts. And here are some of the ways we're educated. One is uh, we have on our screens every day something comes up on my screen that educates me about not answering something that looks like a phishing email. But there's another thing that happens in the city, which I think is even uh, more powerful, which is our technology solutions department sends us fake emails to see if we will open them. I've gotten these, I don't know how often, because they're I, I try not to open them. Uh, and what I frequently do uh, is I will send this to Carrie and say, this looks like a phishing email, is this? And he will send back, yes, this is one of our tests. So we are being educated in that very practical way as well. And then one of the questions, uh, an important question is, you know, about Durham being targeted. Um, my colleague, Mark Anthony Middleton, who's here today, just said to me, I thought, which is a really good uh, metaphor for this, we're not being targeted. What's happening is these viruses are just rattling doorknobs. They're rattling doorknobs and they're seeing what's open. And we, this happens, we are attacked, both the city and the county, thousands of times a year by people attempting to break into our system. This time, they succeeded because of someone or someone's uh, opening an email that was a phishing attempt. But this is not rare, this is common. Uh, and I think the, the, the way that I think we need to all view this is, this was not a question of if, if this was gonna happen, this was a question of when the, this was going to happen. And the question is, are we prepared? And the answer is, we are prepared. And I'm very confident uh, that uh, we will be back up soon, that our major systems will be back up by either late this afternoon or tomorrow. And then subsequent to that, we mainly have to do work on workstations, getting each, making sure that each of the thousand workstations itself is not contaminated. And that will be, that will take a little bit of time. Uh, so uh, I appreciate everyone being here and uh, have again just, a uh, real uh, appreciation for our county colleagues uh, as well as our own staff, so thank you.